Grapes come in clusters. Now, if I wanted to put these grapes into this water bottle, how would I do it? It's obviously way too big to fit this way. The only way to work is if you take them off and put them in one by one. This is an example that has been used to show the differences between normal water and special micro clustered water and how they get into your cells. Makes sense, right? Well, in this video, we're gonna take a deeper look into the question, what is the truth about micro clustering? Before we dive in, we want to take a second to thank our Patreon supporters. Patreon is an awesome platform that allows you to become part of our mission and help us make videos. There are perks at each level of support, so go check it out when you get a chance. Now, back to market clustering. Market clustering is a claim made by some water enthusiasts, usually of ionized water. The claim is that a certain type of water is altered so that the water molecules are clustered together usually through the process of water electrolysis or some other means. It makes the water molecules clump in a smaller cluster so that the water molecules can enter our cells faster and easier, which means it increases hydration at the cellular level way beyond normal water. Some say it can hydrate seven times faster than normal water. It is said that tap water contains water clusters of 15 or more water molecules. And microclustered water is restructured to have three to five water molecules per cluster. That's impressive, right? This fact is claimed can help the water absorb more easily into your body starting at your mouth and esophagus. There are said to be numerous benefits because of this microclustering. Examples given are like the grapes I mentioned earlier, or the difference between throwing a tennis ball at a chain link fence, trying to get it to go through, and throwing marbles at the fence, which are more likely to get through. That all sounds really great, right? Unfortunately, there's no valid evidence for any of these claims. In fact, scientific research has more evidence to refute these claims than to back them up. So let's dive into these claims and the science behind them. Let's first look at microclustered water. What does that mean? And is it possible? We have to make a distinction here between what is being claimed and what is actually seen in scientific literature. The term microcluster is a term seen in studies as reference to bulk water. Researchers have observed that water forms clusters. However, these clusters are unstable and fleeting. In fact, they observed that the water clusters only lasted for picoseconds, a trillionth of a second. But this is not what the claim is suggesting. The idea of ionized water being market clustered is suggesting that these are fixed clusters that stay in that form until it reaches the cell. To put it clearly, there is no scientific evidence that water can hold a sustainable structure or fixed cluster. But even if it was true, the term microcluster would be referring to the actual size of the cluster of water molecules. A microcluster would be 10 to 100 micrometers long which is ironically around the same size as some cells. If a microcluster is the same size as a cell, I doubt that if the water was indeed microclustered, it would help the water get into the cell any easier. But let's say that you could structure water into fixed clusters. Would it work? To know that, we will have to know how cellular hydration works. Don't worry, I'll try to make it as simple as I can. In a nutshell, cellular hydration is regulated by osmotic gradient and aquaporin expression. Aquaporins were first discovered in 1992, and that discovery won a Nobel Prize in 2003. Aquaporins are channels in our cells that allow water to enter our cells. They are bidirectional, so water also exits the cells through these channels. Here's the kicker. The width of an aquaporin is slightly wider than a single water molecule. Aquaporins only allow water molecules to enter the cell one at a time in a single file fashion. But this does not mean it's a slow process. Around 3 billion water molecules file in through the aquaporin per second. So that leads us to the fact that if you could get water molecules to hold together in a fixed structure, that they cannot get into our cells as a cluster. Whether your water had big clusters or micro clusters, the clusters, if they existed, would still need to break down to go into your cells one by one. This concept then leads us to do some further digging into how water works. Water molecules are held together by hydrogen electrostatic bonds. These bonds are fairly weak, which permits water to move freely and form to whatever container it is in. Stronger bonds will make water flow 
more like molasses. Water molecules are always in flux. They break apart and reform bonds very rapidly at 160 billion times per second. It's so important these bonds are weak to allow for proper cellular hydration. In fact, for stable clusters of water molecules to exist, those hydrogen bonds have to be a lot stronger. And if they were a lot stronger, it would prevent water from being able to enter the cell. So actually it wouldn't hydrate us better or faster. It wouldn't hydrate us at all. And this leads us to the final observation of this claim. If microclustering were true, would it have any benefits? Well, if these fixed clusters were in fact able to enter our cells faster, they will be able to leave our cells faster too. It would defy our biology and we would not be able to retain water as well. We would have to drink 180 liters or 47 gallons of water per day just to stay hydrated. And just think about how much you would have to empty your bladder. If the normal properties of water were altered, it would behave radically different. It would be unfit for cooking, bathing, and of course, drinking. This is just the tip of the iceberg about the effects of what this water could do if we could actually make this water enter our cells faster. Tyler LeBaron, the founder of Molecular Hydrogen Institute, did majority of the legwork for all this information. He wrote four articles on this topic and we will link them in the description. Some similar claims you may have heard are things like structured water, hexagonal water, vortex water, etc. These claims mimic the microclustering myth that it helps to hydrate you better or that your body receives these waters better than normal water. Whenever you hear these claims, you can apply the logic we discuss and see if it still makes sense. Most likely, it will not. The reality is that our bodies are pretty efficient at absorbing water. It has built-in processes, and in most cases, it doesn't really need our help. The best way we can help the hydration process is simply drinking enough water. It will handle the rest. So there it is. What do you think? Have you ever heard of this claim or one like it? We would like to know in the comment section of what kind of claims have you heard about water. If you made it this far, here's a bonus fact about aquaporins. Researchers have discovered that molecular hydrogen, or H2, can influence aquaporin expression and have profound effects upon our biology. We would like to thank our sponsors for partnering with us to help teach people about H2. If you want to join the mission, go to patreon.com slash h2minutes and become a patron. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video and help us straighten out some of these misunderstandings about water. And that's your dose of single file H2O in two minutes.